Well, well welcome, welcome to another question and answer. Thank, Thank you for joining us. We're really excited from last week. week. We had a lot of questions and we, we got a lot of comments in between. I just wanted to, uh, for those of you who haven't been watching the Boston Ottoman, uh, Jimmy is doing, uh, just finishing off a semester with Jimmy on the Boston Ottoman. He's going to join me today as an apprentice and maybe we could talk a little bit about his experiences as an apprentice and maybe what his future will hold in upholstery who knows how, how are you doing tonight jimmy i am doing fine i'm rested i thought i was going to do a project a little one today finish up the chair that i'm now doing um but i'm i'm okay i'm glad i'm glad we get a little week off and it'll be fine Next i'm glad I, yeah and that's right you're currently jimmy's currently doing a, a nice arts and crafts chair we call it it's an open arm chair that looks easy but it's we're finding out jimmy right it's a little bit old a little tattered and it's it's kind of it's got a lot of history to it i know that yeah and i think the reason an open arm chair is a little more difficult is you can see it from three three sides rather than if it's closed arms you know you don't see you just see the, the front now if I, we haven't put anybody to sleep out there i was thinking earlier before we got on that if uh the watch the paint drying uh channel is not on they can they can switch to us huh? yes yeah, so we're a little we're hopefully we're going to be a little more lively today than the paint channel so we'll see how that works out anyhow um you will be jump we'll be talking a little bit more too as we go along but i wanted to catch up on some of these comments no, go ahead, right ahead. Uh, so, Janine, uh, thank you, Janine. You've one been one of our earliest supporters. I think going way back, you believe that we've had a YouTube channel, I was told, for 10 years. Is that right? 10 years. Wow. Is that right, uh, Mr. Producer back there? He can't hear me. Oh, he's pretending like he doesn't hear me. Well, he is your son, so, I mean, come on. <laughs> And, and by the way, I, did I mention that if you have any questions, now's the time, live questions to, to be answered, anything about upholstery. Uh, I, I'm not a nuclear scientist, so I don't want any questions. I don't feel those questions, Jimmy. Oh, well, we'll do another show on that. That'll be, that'll be your late night show. <laughs> Very late night. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Janine asks, um, she says um, she's, she is going to purchase the ottoman, I think, or she might have already done it. And, and, and she's wondering about the supplies and what the shipping would be um, to Australia. I really don't know, but I, I can tell you that I'm glad she asked this question because if you do buy the video and the book, um, that's a one cost, low cost, I think of $100. But um, I give the sources for the frame, the ottoman frame, which is a hardwood frame, and I give the sources, more importantly, to the upholstery materials, okay. which gets a lot of people out there don't know where to get these supplies. There's not many people doing this, you know, with supplies. Supplies, yes. Yeah, fabric is one thing. Supplies are definitely the other. And yeah. Amazon does have, uh, you know, a listing of some of the things that you need. They have individual supplies, yeah. right? So this is a kit. It comes with um, an ample, uh, uh, ample supply. Yeah. You're, you're going to have leftover supplies. It's a good starter kit for people. Oh, absolutely. Who, you know, so, and, and that's an at-cost situation. It's a work direct with my supplier, and it's mm -hmm. at-cost. And I think uh, you know, this is what we're trying to do is develop relationships with our students. You know, we're not, we're not out to... Uh, make money on every single supply that we sell we're not well doing maybe that. maybe when you publish that first uh, magazine you know upholstery <laughs> monthly i think that's a good nice title i remember that now okay yeah, well, we'll give you credit maybe you'll be in the centerfold yeah. <laughs> yeah with my ottoman and maybe a love seat on the side <clears throat> Uh, yeah, yeah, did you, you see our blog, by the way? Speaking of love seats, um, no, we have I, a blog. You should go on the website, uh, broadwayupholsteryschool.com, okay. and take a look. Um, we, we have a blog. One of the stories is about a salty love seat. It's called the salty love seat. One of your stories? One of a uh, true story. Oh, God, true not story. another true story. <laughs> yes. And, but uh, people should go and uh, look at it, but just briefly, it's about a, a love seat that was washed out to the, in the ocean. And, and came back to the couple that lost it. It's a romantic story. Really? Something yeah, it's about three paragraphs long. Really? So there's no miniseries out of this thing? I don't think so. Uh, okay, all right. Moving on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think the supplies to... Um, I have no idea what shipping costs is to Australia, but look at it this way. You're getting it wholesale, so, um, Janine. I think it's a good bargain. You're going to have plenty of supplies left over, so I think you should go for it. So, so we, we got, got Omnipotent Mama, who, who made a Erica. Erica. And um, 
I, I think, think omnipotent. Doesn't that mean you know everything? Explain the name. We always, every time I remember Michaela saying it. Yeah. Her, she was wondering what it meant. Didn't she, she say she that? She explained the name in a recent comment. I should have got that. I think. I think, I think what it means is she, she knows everything. everything. Well, I like that type of woman, Kevin. Yeah. Just, you know, just, you can't give you their ribbery today, but you know, if you find one, you should hang on. That's right. I want to know one that knows the next lottery number. But uh, well, that's probably extra, and that's probably you know, you might have to you know, really put out for that one. I had a friend that won the Mega Bucks. I tell you the story. Got all six numbers. Guess how much he won? Take a guess. Two million. Twelve hundred dollars. What? He got all six numbers. Really? I don't know if you remember this in Massachusetts a few years ago in the beginning of the. Uh, I don't know if they called it Mega Bucks or Mass Millions. He had one, two, three, four, five, and six. Oh no way! Original. It so did in fifty thousand other people. <laughs> well, that's how you know. That's what people always say when you you know you think, oh wow, the lottery is one hundred twenty-five million. Okay, yeah. It's okay. a pool. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's a pool, and you. What do you think? You're the only one playing. <laughs> Sonny, I, I thought that was something. Imagine he says he can, he won mega bucks, but he only, you know. I wouldn't even them. brag about that. No, I don't. I think he should keep that hidden. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, we're gonna. Uh, this is a question from Omnipotent Mama. She says, "Doing the happy dance over here. Uh, I've been looking for just this kind of instruction for years. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Already put in my order. Well, thank you. I think you're gonna enjoy. I think what I think what she purchased." Patrick was a custom video, right? Um, Patrick, did she uh, she purchased a, a custom video, Omnipotent? Yes. So be patient with us on that. We've already communicated with her, which includes a little communication. Um, she, be patient because I'm waiting for a, a settee like that to come in the door so that we're going to film me doing that and then give you tips on how to do yours. And there's a few, a few things, things that, that um, on that that, that are special, special um, that, that, that we'll, we'll make sure that we, we, we have the process will run smoothly for her. She can follow along with me. So she's, she's going to get that video. video. That's her video, nobody else's. Okay. Yeah. Sounds, Sounds good. good. Um, so, so she's, she's doing, doing the happy dance. dance. I'm, I'm not sure, sure what that, that is. is. Now, I understand, I understand Jimmy, Jimmy, that you were a ballroom dancer. Is that true? I did it for a couple of years. I wanted to kind of expand my horizons a little bit, but I never got into the happy dance thing. I never got into I don't know what that is. I don't know. That might have been more of an advanced class, I think. The only thing I know about... Um, well, I know a little bit about square dancing, and I heard, okay. I heard a story about a New England barn up there, way up there in northern New Hampshire somewhere, where the barn was built on a hill, and, and, and it was slanted. It was like this, and the, and the call was, grab your partner, turn her around, head uphill, and don't fall out the window. <laughs> No, no, no kidding. Well, a little twisting on the sun. Well, all right. Well, I'll have to really look into that song. Uh, I'll have to remember the lyrics to get some rhythm going with that one. But you did you do you did you? I, I never really got into the square dancing, formal ballroom, you know, a little. Uh, That's pretty jazzy. Yeah, waltz and, and foxtrot stuff like wow. that. And he, he, he's an apprentice upholsterer. He's a ballroom dancer. What else do you do, Jimmy? Uh, I bowl. I am on a bowling team right now. <laughs> What'd yeah. you say? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for keeping you up, so I knew it was the company and not the hour. So. <laughs> oh, no, I was kidding. Bowling yeah. is fun. I used to do it. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? Oh, Janine. She asked a question, Jimmy. I'm not sure if you remember that we had a small wing chair in the, in the studio. Did okay. you see that? When, oh, the red one? Not the really one. teeny one. The, 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 the copy, the salesperson one. Yeah, yeah. She, oh she asked, Janine says, how cute is that tiny wing back chair? Is that a child's chair or a salesman's sample? Well, to answer that question, and she goes on, that was a salesman's uh, chair sample. But they, it became a children's chair at one point. And the thing about that is it was loaned out to a neighbor for their mm -hmm. child that came along. And the, okay. and the person who owned that, mm -hmm. 35 years later, Remembered. it came back to her oh for her God. grandchild. And she had that upholstered for the grandchild. Nice. So That's this, nice, though. I've heard it just seen a lot of use, huh? You know, over the years. I, I mean, I, 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 something like that, I definitely would, like, keep in the family forever. Yeah. You know, you can always reupholster it down the road. Another, oh, yeah, geez, they like this flavor, uh, right, this fabric, rather, and, uh, you know, another pink-flavored uh, 
colored fabric, and then you get the reds. The kids like different animals on it too, so it's all good. But I mean, the foam, the foam uh, furniture they have today. I don't see too much. Them. That brings up a good point. You know, the, today's furniture, can we get sentimentally attached to some of the stuff that's out there? Like, you see, you mentioned foam. There's a very big blob of foam. Who can get sentimentally attached to that? Well, I guess when it looks like some of the cartoon characters of today, you know, they will hold on to it until... Till the, till the, Maybe till they go to college. So, so, you know, the blog story that we had about that salty love seat, that was a beautiful antique love seat that was washed out to but the ocean. But how did it stay together? Well, it did because it's all solid. I, I can't see that. I'm never going to do a blog story about um, fill in the blank, you know, it's, it's, it begins with an I and ends with an A, and it's a four-letter word. But uh, I can't see me saying oh, no. the old foam love seat. No, no, you, know, you, do, you don't. I, I wish, honestly, when I think back of my grandmother's furniture, I think, wow, that was solid. Yeah. That was, that was yeah. uh, some of the chairs. Uh, she had some uh, ottomans that had seats, uh, rather seats that lifted up, and then you could put things inside it. So you stow away things, hide it oh, away. Oh, yeah, it was great. I mean, I yeah. was looking, thinking back and saying, like, wow, if I could do that over again, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, maybe that can be your next project. Speaking I, of next projects, Jimmy, uh, we, we've got an idea that we're going to throw about, and we, we'll like your comments on it. Um, we're going to be going on the road looking for unusual pieces of furniture, uh, maybe in places uh, that, you know, few people dare to go into. Uh, who Nothing knows? too dark now. Not too dark. <laughs> <laughs> but, but maybe maybe we find a side, you know, go out on trash collection day and, and see something along the way and, and maybe pick it up and restore it. We're thinking about doing that. Yeah, it should be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen, sometimes you see uh, couches, you'll see love seats, you'll see sets of, you know, uh, simple dining room chairs out there. It's amazing what... I mean, I remember when I first started doing this, a lot of the women that were in the class would go and say, yeah, geez, I, uh, I was out there in uh, Lincoln, or I was out in Concord yesterday the other day. Wow, geez, I found these fortunes. Hey, geez, I think I'm going to use this for my dining room and set. They, they found it, right? Yeah, they, uh, then yeah. they start looking for a dining room set. We had, I mean, a, dining room I had table. a customer come in of, uh, about a couple of years ago. She just flew in from California, and her arms were tied. No, I'm not kidding. <laughs> no, you she had to bring that joke back, didn't you? God almighty. She did. Man. She just came in. She just bought a home in, in Arlington. She was here for a week. She's going up one of the roads here, and she picks up a love seat out of the trash. Mm -hmm. She brings it in, and uh, there was something about this that looked familiar, vaguely familiar. I was looking at it. She says, what do you think of it? I said, oh, it's, it's nice. I really didn't think it was nice. It, was, it looked very arts and craftsy, and I, that's not my favorite. But, right. But it had flat wooden arms, it had wooden legs, it had sparse upholstery. And so I'm, I'm, she, she hired me to, to recover it. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy, I'm, I'm taking it apart and I find your label, Stickly. It was an original Stickly piece. And it was a $10,000 piece of furniture. Where do you find that? She, she, I said to her, you know, you just flew in from California and you just found this. Don't expect this does not happen. This is just you give really her the history unusual. of this I little? did, I oh. did. She was thrilled. I mean, so she, I'm sure she's still around the local area. Well, I think it's great when you have something like that. I mean, yeah. you didn't wouldn't that be something if we found a piece like that? We could retire. Well, you could retire. Well, I mean, for our next show, maybe. Oh, wouldn't yeah. That be I mean, it'd be nice to find a nice, I mean, you see so much. You know what's always a good thing is uh, community Facebook. Community Facebook. Do they have that in Australia, Janine? I asked I, Janine last I, week. Do you, do you think they have that everywhere? I, they should. I would think they would. So this is where you find things. Well, they, they, well, I wouldn't say, not, you know what they find out an awful lot of? Cedar chests. Cedar chests. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Um, the old-fashioned cedar chests, mm -hmm. the ones with the legs and you have the Keep nice the mods away, right? Oh, yeah. People don't yeah. realize that. Oh, there's the history. I mean, I think they were probably popular up until maybe the early, early 80s, and I think that's yeah. it. Hardly anybody even mentions them anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, Patrick, is there any questions, current questions? No, no, no. Okay, okay, don't forget that we're here for those questions. We're finding out, Jimmy, mm -hmm. that after the show airs, it goes up on YouTube, it stays up on YouTube. Hundreds of people are watching after we're done. Oh, great. I can watch myself and get bored. Okay. <laughs> Let's continue with Janine. She's got, we're never going to get through these, Jimmy. Well, I think Janine should have her own little hotline. I love too. it. I, I encourage people to keep it up. And this is a funny comment coming up from somebody I haven't heard from before, but. Um, Let's, let's finish with Janine. She says, when we buy an online class, can we choose what suits us best? 
Um, the tub chair you mentioned Michelle was doing would see, suit me personally a lot better. Well, actually, that's coming up, so keep, keep watching on that. And, and uh, if you've noticed, we started to label each, each class with specific tasks for each class. So if you buy one class, you're going to, if you just see one thing that you need uh, to understand to be better at, or you don't have any clue as to how to do it, I think it's worth the price of the whole class. And of course, you'll, you'll watch the whole class probably, hopefully. But uh, yeah, we're gonna the more we're gonna be adding content to this all the time. That's good. You know, so Jimmy, uh, Jimmy's one of our main characters or apprentices that we're working with. We hope that one I like day, apprentice. Yes, the like pays that. more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, remember I told you, you you asked for a raise in one of the shows, and I said I'll buy you a pair of platform shoes. Yes, I remember it's another that. Another old joke. Okay. Why don't you explain that one too, Kevin? <laughs> That's a, that's a cobbler's joke. Oh, you're into cobbling now, too? <laughs> Jeez, you, you are a man of many, uh, many... Uh, oh, just the jokes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so now we got Raina. Um, I don't know where she's from, but that's a very unusual name. Do you know that R-A-I-N-A? -A? Do you know what... Rihanna. What? Ooh, what did I say? But do, but I'm do. glad you're awake, Jimmy. I, I, well, the coffee's helping him. <laughs> she says... Um, that's fabulous cat artwork. Why would you want to destroy it? I think she's being facetious or tongue in cheek. So I think what we did was we repaired a chair that was totally, totally, you know, wrecked by a cat. I, oh, I know and, the one. Yeah, I saw that. But the you other know, day. Jimmy, I, I should warn people as a public service announcement. Now, I'm not a upholsterer. I know about cats. New to really. your cats? I know how they do damage. <laughs> <laughs> I heard a story of a fellow. It wasn't, it wasn't me, me. Whose, whose wife, wife gave, gave him a task to go out to the rescue and get a cat. Okay. A rescue, and a rescue, by the way, I think on a serious note, a rescue is the best place to buy any animal. Yes. Not, not a pet store. Don't buy no, anything no, at a pet No, way, way out of control right. with that. But, but a cat out of a, out of a rescue is the best place. So he's going, to, he's, he's going to do the right thing. And uh, he lived in the city, and he, st he, he was going by an alley, and he saw he saw a couple of cats in the alley, mm -hmm. and he picked up what he thought was a normal cat, but this was a feral cat. Oh, And okay. he brought the feral cat home. I think that that, that, that what we were watching was a feral, what she was watching here, and she's asking about that, that chair that the cat destroyed. Could have been a feral cat, because well, this cat just totally destroyed this chair. Some, uh, well, I had a cat once that was the same way. It was... It adored the fabric. I think it just loved yeah. the fabric. You got yeah. that feel. And it just, or hated the upholstery. Well, it was a kind of a semi-new um, sofa at the time. But uh -huh. the cat seemed to like it and, you know, enjoyed it way too much for my taste. And, yeah, uh, it's expensive. You know, well, you got some mohairs that are, that are $500 a yard. Oh. Now, speaking of which, you know, people ask me all the time, what, is there a cat-proof fabric? Oh. And, um... You know, every cat surprise can surprise you, right? Mm. But um, I think the cats, if I'm not mistaken, Jimmy, they, they like to, to go into the fabric and, and then they curl their little, t those little razor sharp claws, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the pullout that they like. That's yeah. where they get the satisfaction. That's where they shop, right? Yeah. So I, I think if you're going to choose a fabric, um, choose one that's got a high, um, you know, weave. You know mm -hmm. that that's tight, a tight weave, right? Okay. And um, not something that's lightweight. Okay. Right. Not thin. Absolutely. If it's thin, they poke through one time. That's all it takes. And one they time. know it too. And they know it, and pew, and you hear it. You can almost hear that sound right now, can't you? That. Mm. that pew. Or better yet, that look. Yeah. Especially they, after the second or third time. You mean when they, they look at you and they say, "Did I do a bad thing?" <laughs> And you do I do I leave now? <laughs> <laughs> but we get a lot of cat damage. Oh, Actually, if there was a camera, we don't have a cameraman right now. But right behind you, Jimmy, if you want to take a look, see that tape that's hanging off that chair? This here? Yeah. Oh wow. That's a cat cat really? damage over there. Is maybe, the cat still in the maybe house? we can get a cameraman if if he's the is there a unionized cameraman in the house? He can. There you go. <laughs> Jimmy, pretend like you're a cat for a minute. Just, oh. hey, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> eh, that's not going to work. <laughs>
Well, you know what? They they seem to they they get the feel for it. I think when they start stretching their claws out, they yeah. get they like that and they go, ooh, okay. So they're sneaky I, little guys, aren't they? Yeah, now, well, dogs I, not so bad. I think it goes in the order, Jimmy. Destroyers of furniture, dog, uh, cats, dogs, husbands, kids. What do you think? Uh, we put the kids before the hubby. You put the kids before the hubby. Yeah. How about the How about that strange? How about that visitor that comes in there? They They're in there somewhere, maybe. Yeah. Well, I mean, unless they decide to make themselves at home. You know. Oh, <laughs> hey, great. Put the shoes here. Oh yeah. Put my feet up on the coffee table. You're gonna sit back. Oh, by the way, got, got a Corona for me? Yeah. Okay. Great. You know. Now I'm staying for another day or two. By the way, Murphy's Law. What's that? When the it word? comes to guests. Yeah. The biggest fellow that you know, the biggest friend that you have, always goes for that tiny side Victorian chair in the corner. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. go for the sofa. No. He the goes, one that can support him he best. He goes for grandmothers. Yeah. Now, there's a question of, of uh, friendship right there. Yes. Your, your uh, calorically challenged friend is Yes. There you go. There's a phrase. I wonder if they'll, uh, people will accept that. He's walking across. <clears throat> Well, the, you know what the they, living room. Well, you know what towards they, your vic mother's Victorian chair. Do you say something? Yes. You do. Oh, I would. I don't think I. Uh, I mean, I. I've had some customers. I had a customer once. She had one of these incidences that happened every time this fella came over. He would go for that small chair and break it. Oh my God! And she, uh, he broke it three or four times. Oh, he once would be enough. And then I fix it three or four times. And then finally, she, you know. I hid it in the closet. So uh, he had a stand before he He's... came over, and he mm. he just found another place to sit. Or he found another house. <laughs> <laughs> that was my story. Sad upholstery. Well, you stories. know what you know what it is. It's not so much you know the, uh, the if somebody were to sit normally in a chair. That's but it's when right. they sit Jimmy back. brings when up a good sit, point. When they sit back That's... in the chair and it's Sunday afternoon watching football, they think, oh my God, this is. I, I think you know, some of our, our, our friends in the manufacturing industry, who we won't mention their name, who have sofas with secrets and sofas with marshmallows on it, or, you know, that's how they, yeah. the, the marshmallow sofa, yeah. um, has trained uh, some of us, um, especially men, I have to say, that uh, you don't sit, you flop, or you jump, or you dive, or you whatever. I haven't dived on a coach in God knows how long. Because you've taken my class and you've known that that would be a mortal sin. Well, you that cannot. and all the quality work I've done over the years. <laughs> That's right, you don't want to destroy it. So, uh, yeah, um, with Victorian furniture, if, if, if uh. had, let's go back 150 years. You're, you're oh. on Beacon Hill, Jimmy. You walk into your friend's house. You have your beautiful starched, you know, pants and clothes, and you know, and you're invited into the the lady's house, the Victorian's house, and mm -hmm. you don't uh, sit. You perch on that furniture. Yes. If you, you fell back on that furniture, they, you would have been kicked out. Yes. You got too relaxed. You that's were at right. the edge of the sh you, you, you were at the edge of right. the couch. You were sitting proper. There that's was no right. flopping. That's right. That's right. You got it, Jimmy. Yeah. So let's move on. Um, any questions out there, please? You know, that's what we're here for. I'm not sure how many people are out there watching right now. But like I said, every, every time we go afterwards, people are watching and commenting. It's great, though. Um, oh, we do want to mention subscriptions for the, the YouTube channel. Okay. We found out, Jimmy, that we have nearly a million views on our channel. And oh, thank wow. you for that. Wow. That is... But guess what? So we're going to have a party only one, <laughs> no, no, only one out of ten people subscribe. Oh, come on. Why don't they do a little, do a little something here. Yeah, we want, we want yeah. people to put on those notifications for you know when we're doing one of these live shows yeah, too, right? It, that's all. You're going to get a notification. You watch it. You, you, you learn as you, you go. You don't want to miss this. This is, this is great stuff. we got the Boston Ottoman guy here. And next week we might have Michelle. Who knows? Or... Oh, that'd Maybe be nice. another fella come in. From... I have never, have I? I've never met Michelle, right? I don't think so. Oh, I'll have to be I had a guy that. come in though. You're gonna have some competition, Jimmy. Oh, wait a minute! Show. No, you didn't say this. No, was well, we had a, a, a wonderful guy from Guyana. Guyana. Okay. Uh, his name is Christopher. He's he wants to be an apprentice. And he, he said he'll work uh, for free. What? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute now. All right, I'll have to cut my rate then. I guess a little bit. What is it? Uh... No, but he, he would make a good apprentice too. So we we have we're gonna have plenty of work for you. Don't worry, Jim. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, okay, I have so to scour the, the suburbs and the uh, byways and the highways for all of the, for the furniture that we could probably muster up. We're going to find some good stuff out there. I honestly, like I said before, I, I know that this is space limited in the shop, but I would love to try to do a sofa only because mm. I've done chairs and I've done the ottoman just to get the experience to say what is the approach, what do you do, what do you, what's different. And just what's to give you an idea, I'm glad you brought it up. People might be wondering why we don't do sofas. It's, <clears throat> we would probably have to break that up into three semesters, I bet. Really? It would oh, take you that long as an mm. apprentice. You know, so that's one reason. But, you know, we might be able to do that if we had bigger space. And we might one day have yeah. a bigger space. Yeah, I mean, space. well, depending on, I mean, I think if you had maybe one or two people working on the project, just to kind of hurry it up a little bit, not... Oh, I, and that reminds me, Jimmy. I'm glad Jimmy's here because he reminds me of stories. Why Jimmy's here, that's why he's here. If this works out and good... And this is an unpaid position for and this is a, that you know. But he does have a pair of, of used platform shoes that I bought him, so he did get a raise. Yeah, a raise. It only amounts to about an inch and a half, people. So, I mean, uh, you know... But I have an interesting thing that happened to me. I, I had a woman call. Yes. Um, she had an antique sofa. Um, she calls it the Beast. And but some of them are. I know. This one is. This is a beautiful empire with rolled arms. It's got a double rolled arm. It's got an upholstered seat. <clears throat> Something looked familiar about it, even in the pictures she sent. So I go over to the house, local, mm -hmm. and I've been upholstering since the early, I'd say the mid-70s, 74. 1974 was when I first started um, an apprenticeship uh, program in an upholstery shop in Newton, Massachusetts. Okay. So I'm, um, I'm now, looking at this piece. Is that a historic building now? Uh, no, it? unfortunately. Uh, I'd yeah. like to say that it was, you know, the birthplace of George Washington or something like that, but it's oh. not. I, I, it was a George maybe that was there, but it wasn't <laughs> <from> George Washington. <laughs> Anyhow, so I go into the house. I go over to the house, and I'm looking at the work. Now, upholsterers can tell each other's work. We can, we can tell. And I'm looking at this, and I, I said to her, my exact words, before I found out any of the history of this, I said, this was done um, in the 70s by a, a really good upholsterer who did it all by hand. Okay. And I was telling her this, I, I said, and he struggled with this because he didn't have a, a long nose. Let me Needle. just show you. He didn't have a long nose <laughs> staple gun like this guy does, right? Okay. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now that gets into these little tight areas of a, of a, of a a sofa like this, an empire right. sofa. But I could tell this fella, he, he struggled. So I said, where did you, where did you have this upholstered? She said, well, I lived in Newton at the time, and Newton Santa. Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, I know who did this. My mentor did this, so, did this, did this. You in did 1976, it. she got no it way. upholstered. My mentor, Mr. Montague Rubenstein, greatest guy I ever met, he did that. And I could tell because the double piping was pieced in a way that I know he did it. He cut it straight across rather than on the on the bias. Okay. So I knew I knew it was him. And so she she confirmed too that another interesting thing about this sofa. And Patrick, we gotta do a really good YouTube video on this. Right. We already got permission to do it. Um, she told me she she called up her in-laws to find out where this was made. It was made during the Civil War in Pennsylvania. Oh my God. So I'm not sure, she told me the town and I tried to look up the map to see where it was in relation to Gettysburg, right. right? But can you imagine at the same time Gettysburg was going on, this sofa was being manufactured. Wow. They had that faith. They had the faith that everything was gonna be okay, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? So the, so the piece has, I love this history connection that we have to some Well, I think everything has a bit of history to things. You, you know, you look at, uh, the changes in some of the cities and towns over the last 20 years. You say, well, this used to be here, but now, well, they've turned, taken this down, now it's something else. We've and lost a lot. Yes. I, I have a story for you. We love stories. Jimmy, you really sparked the stories in me. Thank you. But I was talking to a, a guy, I can't call him a nice guy. He wasn't a nice guy. He was one of these, sorry, uh, he was an excavator of some sort. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And they were excavating a hill. Okay. And they cut into the hill. This is this is in New England. I won't tell you where. Old New England. Okay. They cut into the hill with the excavator. Mm -hmm. And guess what they guess what they kind of sliced open? A building? They sliced open an old tavern. You're kidding. They sliced it open and then what they were looking at, one minute there was a hill, 
and, and then they slice it with the excavator. The next minute they're looking into a 1700 tavern with the mugs still hanging. You know, they used to hang the mugs in the old days. Yes. The mugs are still hanging. The bars, everything is there. It looked like what happened was the English are coming. Cover it up. Yeah, cover it. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I don't it want it this up. business and anymore. Then, and then they forgot about it until this guy came and sliced it. Well, he didn't do the right thing by calling the local. This was a few years ago, folks. This was a long time ago, so it's past history. Nobody can get in trouble. But they should have at the time, because instead of Today calling, they would, they would have gotten a lot of trouble. Instead of calling the proper people, they just said, take what you want to all the guys. And oh dig my God. It, bury it up and forget what you said. No saw. way. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Oh my God. Now, we find things in Sophie's that um, we want to, if we find anything of historic value, the customer knows it, or if it's something that's, you know, tied to something bigger than us or mm -hmm. bigger than the customer, we will, you know, obviously report that. Because, you know what, folks, it's, it's, it's more fun stories, as you can tell. The stories are more valuable than the actual things, you know? Yes, the memories. What's one, what's, what, the, <clears throat> I'm telling you a story that nobody else has ever heard before, probably, mm -hmm. you know? Now, if they had went to the it, the powers to be at the time and, and said, "Wouldn't that be? We'd still be they'd still be talking about that in a historic circle." That would be some. That there would be a standard after that of what the, not to do. So the furniture represents that type of history. So we're going to go into get this this piece of furniture. Okay. That was built. By, when was Abraham Lincoln assassinated? It's eighty four, uh -huh. uh, uh, 1864, yeah. I believe. So this was manufactured before he got assassinated, while the Civil War was going on. And this on. thing is as solid as a rock. And it's solid as a rock. And wow. then all of a sudden, it's been upholstered in the 70s by my mentor. So. And now I'm going to be upholstering it in 2019. So it's been only reupholstered twice. Uh, I don't know about Maybe. that. Okay. I, I'll find you'll out be, when you'll I You'll be fine when everything comes yeah. off. Now okay. I can't remember that, but well, something about this piece that I, I remembered. But the first project that I did here, I remember you telling me, because you would ask me, what do you think, Jim? What, how many times do you think it's been done? How many times do you think it's been reupholstered? And I said, looking at the damage and looking at how many staples I pulled out and the time and everything, and I said, three or four times maybe? You said seven. Yeah, seven times. I was like, now, do you what? think you can you could upholster some of the stuff that they're making today seven times? I twice tops. I mean, do you I mean, think three it would on the survive? outside? No, I, I, it wouldn't survive. It wouldn't survive. We we've had sofas that you get that blog story. That ocean going love seat. Yeah, it's out in there with, swimming like with that? the fishes and, and seaweed in it and sharks biting. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Well, you're gonna make it, you're gonna give it that National Geographic, uh, kind which of reminds switch. me of another story. Oh we, no, not get, another we, one, folks. Uh, if you want to go back to the paint channel. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next one. I have a huge amount of Italian button twine. This is from Janine, Jew or similar, that was sold to me as springtime when I knew less. So sp spring t Italian button twine is not, well, she might be talking about um, Ruby. That's the name of it, Ruby twine, Ruby Italian twine. I think that's what she means. Jude, yeah, Jude, yeah. Okay. That's, that's one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to tie springs with. Okay. And you can always use that, Janine. I, I can't read the rest of the question because of my, this staff, uh, is, I can't see it. It's cut out. So we'll, we'll get... Uh, we'll work on that yeah. next time, Janine. So we got another question. Oh, this is an interesting one from, another one from Omnipotent Mama. For sewing, since I don't have the room or can afford the kind of machine you use, I bought a vintage Necky. It's circa 1957. Not, it's... I was born in 58, Jimmy, so the machine's older than me. Well, yeah. So, uh, and it Necky, was... Necky, well, who makes that? I, I never who? heard of it, but it was a one-amp motor. And she's saying it was the Ferrari of sewing machines in its day, and hmm. it's the closest in power to a professional I can get. Well, guess what? I started working um, in a project once with on a pedal machine. Right. So any, any machine that... Um, did I say pedal, treadle? Pedal, treadle. You said pedal. 
Um, I heard you. You know, you're, you're stepping on it. The thing about a sewing machine that you're you're stepping on, you're stepping on the machine's work and no motor. If the lights go out, right? You're yeah, still, you're you see the lights dim. Okay, yeah, we can finish <laughs> this job. I gotta get this done. Yeah, okay. But but um, I think any machine that that makes a good stitch, period, it doesn't matter what mm -hmm. how old it is, and if you like it, go for it. You know? I wonder who makes them. I don't. It's a, it sounds like an Italian. Now, see, I have my mother's sewing machine. If you, if you can sew on it and it makes a good stitch and you're comfortable with the machine, mm -hmm. it's you getting comfortable with the machine that's important. Ooh, guess who just checked in? Who's that? Ami Bone Mama. Oh, oh, wow. So we're going to get a live question from her. So what, what is it uh, that she asks? Oh, she's just checking in. Just checking in. Oh, nice okay. to see you. We're, at, we're actually. She said, uh, what was that, Nietzsche? Is Italian. Ah, Italian. Okay. Nietzsche. That's, okay. Mm -hmm. So obviously a, a very, like a singer here. Oh, okay. so she's she's got a yeah. The, well, okay. the singer actually the singer machines were were the king for a hundred years. Oh yeah, and they still are to a point. Well, what happened with singer mm -hmm. is the Juki, and I'll tell you what happened with it. So Juki says, "How can I make a better machine?" So they go out and they buy a singer machine. And they reverse engineer the Singer machine oh. and say, how can we make it better? <clears throat> so the biggest thing that they did was the oil is inside the machine. It's a self-contained oil. It, it, the oil comes up from the well in the bottom and stays self-contained <laughs> inside the machine. Whereas the Singer... You got to add. You had to add. And as soon as you add oil on the top of a machine, you get fabric. You, you're going to get fabric. Eventually. My mother did that. She, actually, like I said, I had my mother still... The singer from 1963, 64. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and, and she had to oil it. Yeah, so I remember the problem that. With she that had a singer oil, baby. So, so the, the singer still made a good product. There was a time there where they were both the Juki and the singer. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you're going out looking for a machine. The Juki, you never get oil in any fabric ever. Right. But the singer, you will. Yeah. But still so but had, yeah, right. Which she one had, are you going to pick? I know. I know. <laughs> well, you know what, though? My mother knew enough that when she did it, Everything was away from it. Well, that's right. You have to be careful, but when you're... And you couldn't leave. There was no film. You couldn't leave right. any film that's anymore. That's right. That's right. So let's go. The Omnipotent. We've got to catch up with some of these questions. Jimmy, you're a very interesting. I'm sorry I made fun of you earlier about the balling. But, uh, that's okay. Being, that's uh, right. I, I, I think I you're know. a very interesting guy. At least yeah. you didn't bring up the coconut hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But Jimmy had an unfortunate mis <laughs> miscommunication. I was but. getting excited, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, you know how it is in the upholstery. Do you world. want to tell the story? No, about the, that's okay. No, I won't. I won't, I, I won't <laughs> embarrass. Right. I won't embarrass. I'm not here to embarrass. Sorry, bring it up. Uh, yeah, I yeah, okay, yeah. We're gonna preempt the show, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that's an easy mistake to make. I was not what I was thinking at the time. Yeah. It's like coconut hair. By what the way, I'm losing my coconut. My coconut hair. Well, you know what? I'm sure if you went to the Molar Crow School of Cosmetology, they'd probably be able to find that, like, get that cure. You know, what is that stuff? Brito? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's read the next question, Jimmy. My favorite video is one of your older ones, an eight-way tie spring. Oh. Cutting around the post still gives me pause, but, but I do a great job on spring. Smiley face. I find I can do the... Then she goes on. I can. I find I can do the build of a seat and back from frame to fabric ready, without too much pause. It's the fabric cutting. That's true. And then it it goes out here. I don't read, know the rest of it. But what she's saying, Jimmy, is everybody, all my students, have a trouble with the cutting, and I think you do too, right? Oh yeah. Cutting around posts. And the reason it's it's we had an engineer. Engineers have the hardest time with this. Do you know why? They should. They should because have the easiest time. They. It's just the opposite. Engineers have the hardest time because all of their work is intuitive, intuitive, right? Mm -hmm. I had an engineer in here one day, and I, I was trying to teach him these cuts, and I was trying to explain it every way I can. The problem is you're working in reverse. You're working. It's almost like working in a mirror. That's that's the problem. Okay. Well, right? people don't fold. get. The, if you don't have that concept, then you're not going to be able to get uh, it. That's right. And, I, and I, I, over the years, I've developed ways of explaining it. But with this fellow, he just wasn't getting it. He was getting super frustrated. Very bright guy. You oh, know, sure. he was probably designing the Guggenheim or, 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 or you know. Yeah, but he can't cut a piece of fabric four inches. I mean, that's. But, but I, I, the funniest thing, he, he was so frustrated. He was trying to cut the on the seat. He was okay. so frustrated. He had taken the back of the chair. It was an upholstered back. He had taken the back off. 
went to the back of the chair, stuck his head through to, to look upside down at the cuts to see what, what I was talking about. Wow. That's... And he was that frustrated. Yeah, well, you know... Uh, but, but it's just, it's, it's practice. Right. I think a lot of people don't understand the angles, and there, there may be some angles yeah. with the corner, the corners. Uh, every chair is different. Yes. And every a comment here different. from, of course, uh, we, we, Erica. Sorry to interrupt you, Jimmy, but we have an important comment Tommy from Erica. Uh, yes. Uh, I had a chair with coconut fibers, too, and I thought it was horse hair. Yeah, see, see. So it so, happens to all of us. It wasn't until you said it. Thank you, yeah, thank you, thank you for that. I, I feel like now I'm not alone in this world. You know, Jimmy, I think you've got great support out there already. Yes, you're becoming I may a star. have a fan club going real soon, Kevin. So maybe one day what we should do. Now this brings up a good point. Erica brings up a good point. Why don't one day we just we have a chair, and we we put all the elements of the world into it. Like we can have Hawaiian coconut fiber. We can now. Not many people. Do you know that uh, horse hair comes from Poland? Polish horses, and that they shave the horses. It's not. A lot of people think it's from the mane of the horse or the tail of the horse. No. They do use that for uh, horse hair fabric, but not for horse hair itself. Okay. So they treat these horses very. We love animals, don't we, Jimmy? We, yeah, we, I do. These horses are treated really well. I think, though, the coconuts. Though I'm not sure about how they treat. Well, the you know, you. you, you <laughs> the words just escape me right now. I know, I know. How I have a fan out there of coconut hair. Well, so. I think it's great that you were a fan, but I think maybe, why can't we get all these elements? We can have a French silk. We can have a Hawaiian coconut fiber. We can have the Polish horse hair. Does that mean we can have, have the ruby twine. We can put all this into one chair. Maybe that could be a good project for us. God, you really like to work people to death, don't yeah. you? <laughs> But I'm going to go. Is there any more questions, current questions, Patrick? Not at all, but I think it's great that Erica supported you in, in that mistake. I, I am thrilled. I, I'm going to have to send her something, I think. Maybe some coconut fiber. Uh, well, there must you be cheapskate. A... Send us some horse hair. That's the expensive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's going to be the, the mission of the year. I mean, I actually, there's only. Do you know how much horse hair costs? How much? A well, five you... pound bag of horse hair. Well, they, they give it to you in a box. It's, it's probably this tall by. It's probably about two feet by four feet. Okay. And it has loose horse hair in it. It's not that. It's not. doesn't weigh. Did I say five pounds? Right. right? Well, that has a value, a retail value, of about four over four hundred dollars. What? Yeah. So you put filet mignon. How much is that? How much is five pounds of filet mignon? Oh, for? twenty dollars. Roughly, say eighteen to twenty dollars a pound. That doesn't even come compared to close to horse hair. How about how about gold? What are they getting for an ounce of I, gold? I'm not in the gold market this week, so I, I wouldn't know. I don't know what the price is. <laughs> the price is varied every year. It seems to be varied. Well, we every by year. no means are going to say that we know anything about the markets of any type of market. No, we know the supermarket, and that's. I know they, maybe a meat market. Maybe or two. you know, yeah, the local market. But that's I don't know anything about the stocks. Uh, that's okay. Well, anyway, hey, maybe we can do that early morning class on Saturday <laughs> with who's that financial wizard that's around the corner. <laughs> so omnipotent mama, long question here. I love the idea of custom videos. I have three projects I would love that kind of assistance with. I have a signed Mason Jensen piece from Paris, circa 1950. I've actually seen this. She sent a picture of it. It's very petite love seat. Now, now, do you know why most French furniture is petite? Any mm -hmm. idea, Jimmy? No, I, I know, I'm no. waiting for that historic story. And, and do you know why some of these, a lot of French furniture comes apart, like it comes apart in sections? Uh, think, think Paris. That's the, that's the, that's oh, the, the think small, Paris. Small apartments. Small. Exactly, Jimmy. You are bright, brighter than you look. I know. I, <laughs> I, I say that. I joke around a lot about that. But it's that's true. exactly right. The smaller, the smaller furniture, and to fit into those back apartments up these built, you know, there's all kinds of hidden, hidden apartments in Paris, right? Mm, I think we have one in Cambridge. Didn't we have one of those a little while back? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story for another time. That's one of those fireside stories, I can tell you that. She's got a story here. Oh, okay. The, the frame is black lacquer. I had the frame refinished by a master piano refinisher that oh, I was God. lucky to have in my area. Totally old school methods. I have the fabric for it, but have been scared to attempt it because there's a lot of welting and cushions need to be made. I need to be careful because the frame has been professionally redone. I would have love having a step-by-step -step on how to tear down the redo, and this is really important. I've already given her some advice today about taking it slow. 
mm. because you may not have to tear the whole thing down because it's been it's really the French have such a distinctive style of upholstery. It's like they're, they're cooking, it's so fine, mm. fine cooking, and all the ingredients are measured out perfectly, right? So their techniques are Their different. techniques are much different than anybody else, than anybody else. They, they, especially the old school French, which this is. So what you don't see, they took great care in all the stuff underneath the fabric that you never see. Okay. A lot of nice hand stitching rolls in there and everything. So we're gonna try to keep as much of that as possible. Just came in. So this just came in. Um, yeah, Monique. Okay, Mo Monique. Will you read that her name. <coughs> Monique Strids. I get it. Oh, Monique. Str Why I don't you read that question there, Jimmy? I started with taking of the upholstery of the armrest of the Dante chair. The fabric is with gold threads, horsehair as stuffing. Yeah, good. Wow. That's beautiful. Gold thread? Is that is that actual gold thread? Uh, that's what this says right now. Wow. So is that there, has to be a real refined, solid. I'm not sure of the question though. Is it a question in there? I or? think no. I think she's making she's just a statement. Making a on statement. It. So that I think what she's t what she's picking up on is the unusual furniture that we come across. I was telling somebody wow. the other day, Jimmy, about the teddy bear chair that's Danish. Mm -hmm. And we're talking, I've only had one, I think one or two, one that I can remember in my career, mm -hmm. over, over 40 years. And so the teddy bear chair is a Danish made chair and it, it, it's usually made out of leather, brown leather, okay. right, Papa Bear, right, Papa right. Bear. And um, it's metal framed, except for the bottom. It's metal wood, framed. Metal framed. It's all hand-stitched leather. It's, it's a nightmare of a job to do. It's really difficult. And that the whole idea of it is that when you sit in it, mm -hmm. you have a feeling of the chair is giving you a bear hug. So that the chair, it, the chair does come in a little bit on you. So okay. when you upholster it, you have to make sure you upholster it that you don't want to firm that up in any way. That's made to, it's made to collapse almost into you. Like a bear with like an like oversized a bear chair. Which brings up an area. Jimmy, do you ever tell you the story about the time I almost wrestled a bear? No, no. Tell us. I, I wish was I could. Was this in your younger days? Yes, it was. I wish I could be sitting here saying that I, I did wrestle that bear, but I didn't. But there was a sportsman show. Today, I don't think they would do this because we love animals, right? But back then, yeah. uh, they had this uh, wrestling bear in, in uh, the old Boston Garden. And... And Jimmy, I know you know about the old Boston Garden, right? Yes, I've had uh, numerous events there over the years. Did you ever go to the sportsman show? No, I never did. Did you ever? You a never young went. Young lad of, of of probably seven or eight at the time. They had a, a, a ring, a <laughs> boxing ring set up, and they had a bear, a grizzly bear, mm -hmm. and he, was he retired? <laughs> he, he was an older bear. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, Ready for the he, he had a muzzle on, and, and um, the ring announcer got up there. Any young man out there would like to wrestle this bear, not the Papa Bear chair. And, you know, it's interesting. I did wrestle. A, I did wrestle a bear. I wrestled that Papa Bear chair later on. I wanted. I'd like to see how they. That's so what happened? What happens is, my friends are all telling me because I was kind of a big guy. I was kind of, you know, I had muscles. Yeah. And and. Um, the, the ring announcer says, come on up, anybody who wants to wrestle the bear. So I, I'm, I'm going down the aisle, and I, there are already some gentlemen, much bigger than me, who had already stood in line, much more eager than me. I'm kind of, you know. And the first guy gets in there, Jimmy. Yeah. And I uh, think Ragdoll. Oh, right? my God, really? Think Ragdoll. This, this bear took this guy like he was a ragdoll, and he was much bigger than me. So I never got down there. I, I, I wish I could say that I, I wrestled that grizzly bear just for some, a story to tell. But, but years later, I the wrestled bear that. bear remembered you. I, <laughs> no, I wrestled that, that papa bear chair. And it was like wrestling a real bear, that chair. So I know it didn't. Well, not quite, Kevin. Well. Uh... <laughs> that was, that was but we a... talk too much, Jimmy. You yeah, talk I, too much. No, I, I think, I, I like to think that I'm not talking too much, but that's okay if you think otherwise. Um, I got to get to this. So she says, I have the fabric, but she's been scared to attempt it, uh, omnipotent. But she's going to. She's going to do just great with this video. Well, you know do. what? I think if she sent you some pictures of what it looks like, 
to give you an idea of what she's going to be doing. Well, we're going to what we're going to yeah. do is we're going to wait. She has to be paid a little patient because okay. we have to wait for something similar to come into the shop. Okay. And we're going to do that. Okay. Um, and and the thing about what I'm waiting for is a chair with specific arms that that petite love seat has, which are very unusual. It's an upholstered, uh, stitched arm with piping on both sides. It's a boxed arm. And, the, and that's why I don't want her to take too much apart on that because that has to be done in a very specific way. She's probably not ever seen or, or done that before. Very few people have. So how is it done? What is it? Well, it's... And it's, this is a French technique? Or is it yeah, one? French always find a hard way of doing things. <laughs> and this is a good example of it. It's called a petite love seat. Sounds harmless, doesn't it? Well, yeah. Is that a not petite. petite. Come on, Jimmy. You can upholster a petite love seat. What's wrong with you? Uh, well, I didn't see that video, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm waiting. Actually, that would be a nice project, though. A nice, I think so. If we could, yeah. yeah. So Janine's asking another question. Okay, if you let Janine speak. I have a huge amount of Italian button twine. Oh, this is the question that I couldn't read before. Jute okay. or similar that was sold to me as spring tying twine when I knew less than nothing, she said. And I'm hoping that I could make spring tying twine by using three lengths twisted together with an electric. I, I, I'll tell you, I'd, I'd avoid that. I would, I would say... I would say get that ruby twine and because it's such a specific twine to spring tying because Jimmy it's an Italian twine and mm. it has it has a quality to it um, it's got like a wax coating on it so it's and, strong well it's more importantly it, it holds <clears throat> a knot oh and the reason that's important is because anything <clears throat> else like nylon or cotton or anything like that especially nylon twine there's a substitute for that that's nylon uh, spring tying twine mm -hmm. that doesn't hold the knot and the knots slip off they slip right. now, after you don't a while want that wears away. not long really? after yeah i've seen high-end quality newer manufactured pieces that were done in nylon twine that slip off the edge and in no time at all it looks like you're on that ocean you know so um i would avoid i would that's what another reason everybody get that ottoman get that uh, video about the ottoman because you get the proper supplies it's so important so then she goes on you don't talk too much in the videos it's either information on processes or entertainment with some stories etc it's what sets your channel and teaching apart and far above others don't change she says because we, we were saying i asked the question jimmy do i talk too much I'd rather not answer that right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, because somebody one time commented, you, you talk too much. I, I said, well, just turn the, the volume down if you're... Some, some people Don't learn differently, that, right? Kevin. You're not supposed to say that. You say, oh, I'm sorry. I'll, 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 let me get back into the chair and how I'm taking it apart or show you. Oh, then, and then Terry, she confirms. She says to Janine, totally agree. Usually watch a couple of times. Great. Well, well we have found that our retention rate... <clears throat> Jimmy, mm -hmm. hello, retention. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was, I was waiting there for a second. A retention rate in the videos is four and a half minutes. Really? That's pretty good. I, I was told by a YouTube uh, creator. It wasn't me. <laughs> that that's pretty good. Anyhow, let's go on to the next time. Uh, it's the trash day fine and refinish. Oh, she says, uh, Janine has commented because we've talked about this trash day thing. She says, Yes, yes, yes to the trash day, fine, and refinish. I love the idea. And we have Jimmy actually is going to come into ha in handy because he does refinishing. We were just talking about that. So so if we find a piece that needs refinishing, we know who to take it to, right? Jimmy? Oh, then I can have my own show finally. Thank you. Yeah, we'll get you all lined up for your next for your show, Jimmy. Oh, da 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 da. I've got to find a theme song. Anybody want any uh, suggestions for a theme just song be for my show? <laughs> you don't want to plagiarize. Oh, no, no, let's say something original, maybe. Uh, well. Oh, and then we're thinking about, I've got a couple of old videos out there, you know, that I've done. And that, that we've been learning a lot about, you know, filming Production, and all that right. and everything. The earlier videos, <laughs> you know, uh, um, were shaky and grainy and the, and the volume. So you're you going to redo them? Uh, we're thinking about removing them. No. Well, would We've you... We've been outvoted would, with that. Everybody we, wants to keep the We got outvoted. Janine says, yes, leave the original vi videos. And she says, has an important thing so up. Even if you can't see something and maybe do another one with the hidden... If she has that in parentheses. Hidden footage shown this time. It's great to see the evolution of the YouTube channel. 
Well, that's true. I think that's yeah. She's got a great point there. So I think I, I just got, think if you were, if you wanted to, to enhance the lesson, if that's what you wanted to do, right? That's right. the only thing I say. Add to it. Right. I would say that. So we got a long, uh, a couple of more questions. Um, so somebody says, Colleen, this is a common problem. Where can I purchase all the materials you use to fix? these cushions and the furniture that you do. You may have helped me decide to keep our sofa. Wow. This is another thing, Jimmy, you know? We're here to try to ex it, it, save furniture, in the very least extend the life of a piece of furniture, like our cat uh, damage videos mm -hmm. do, um, all to, in order to try to save you know, the environment a little bit to make mm -hmm. our contribution. It's on a serious note, you know? Um, and we can do that. You know, mm -hmm. we feel we can do that. So supplies, though, materials, I keep, you know, I, I hate to sound my own horn, and, and, and I'm, I'm, try, I'm not trying to self-promote at all, but the, the video with the ottoman, which tells you how to use the supplies that you get, mm -hmm. that you're going to get wholesale, I think it's the way to go. Okay. I really do. Um, <clears throat> you, you'll have extra supplies, and with the channel and the online classes, you, you'll have the guidance and, and the instruction mm -hmm. to, to do things like to extend the life of uh, cushions and, the, and cat damage, to fix cat damage and things. So let me see what else we got here. I just found, this is from, uh, this is a Russian name, so I can't pronounce it at all. Do you want to make a go No, that's okay. I'm not good with the Russian this week. <laughs> I just found this video recently, and now I am trying this to fix the sags on my bed springs. Where can I, where I am, hold on, where I am, it would cost just about the same to buy a new box springs as it would to import the twine you were using. Mm. So I bought much, much less expensive jute twine, and I'm doubling it. I also have a few serpentine springs from an old sulfur I can weave into the middle of the bed if I find it needs more support. If it doesn't work out, no big deal because I will always need twine rope for repairing the cat tower I have and I'll just <coughs> I'll just suck it up and buy a mattress of some sort. Well I think this is perfect. You know, this is a good this example of saving, you know, for a, a mattress. He's trying to save a mattress based on what the I'd like to see what the mattress looks like with the springs and see how that all that how he's gonna do it. I would love to get a picture of that if if um, I'm gonna try the name. I I'm, right. I'm probably gonna regret this. Uh, oh I think wait a minute now. I thought it was a Russian name. Guess what it says? What? Cat nip kit cat. <laughs> You gotta get out a little bit more there, Mister. Uh, That's his, which, That must be his pet name. Yeah, don't. But then, you know, I'll let you read the the one in parentheses there, Jimmy. It says, "What does that say? Do you see it?" Edited. Oh, what, what, Brandy. What am I looking at? Oh. I could see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. You did well with that uh, proper, <laughs> proper uh, enunciation. Uh, thank you very much for expanding my. Uh, yeah, definitely. Oh my God, I the, don't, couldn't even tell you what how to pronounce That's a tough that. name, I'll tell you. Yes, even even breaking it down would be an act of God. <laughs> so, t Patrick, how much time do we have left? Um, how much time? Technically, it's been an hour. Wow, well, that that was the fastest question and answer show I think we've ever had. And I think I know the reason why. I think our guest here has has really promoted um, some good conversation. I hope. I hope we stayed on subject most of the time. Most of the time. I didn't even get to the hundred, believe it or not, the, the hundred and seven. On that note. On that note, 117 videos. I want to talk about the next question and answer. Okay. So I think this is where we'll end it, Jimmy, because your phone is going crazy over there. Yeah, somebody actually <laughs> wants to speak to me. I'm kind of surprised. Maybe it's the coconut fiber industry. Yeah, your... I, they wanted me to be the spokesperson. <laughs> I, I, I can now go back to work again. I feel great. <laughs> we'll see you next time.